Hey everybody, we are talking about synth pedals this week, a way that you can make crazy, crazy sounds with your electric violin, viola, cello, whatever. I'm really excited about this week. We're gonna get some of the most out there sounds that we've had so far. If you've been tracking with us for these last 14 weeks, you'll know that we hit a different effect each week. Talk about what are the knobs, what are the settings, what are the different parameters. And then we bring in a guest artist most week to talk about how they use that uh, effect or that type of pedal is to make artistic decisions in their work. How are they taking all this science and turning it into art? This week, we've got the amazing Sarah Hubbard and my discussion with her is gonna be in a separate video. I'm gonna put a link to it here so you guys can check that out after we talk about what are all the different things that are synths, what are synths, what are all these different oscillators and filters, what is all that? Then we'll get to hear from Sarah, how does she use these as an artist to do cool musical things? Just so you can get an idea of what synth pedals sound like, I've got a couple examples for you. The first one is the intro to the fourth movement of the Denon Zone Electric Violin Concerto. You're gonna he hear three different synth sounds there. There will be one synth sound, and then sort of a clean violin sound, and then two different synth sounds, all played by a dashing young gentleman. Uh, you might recognize him. So those are some sounds that you can make with a synth. And then we're gonna have Sarah Hubbard, who's gonna be doing that whole other discussion with me. She's got a couple of examples of some other crazy sounds that you can make with synths. And then we'll get into what all this really is. <laughs> Listen to that all day. If you're not into the flow bots, you should get into the flow bots. They're amazing. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning. We are going to get pretty deep and pretty uh, like scientific and nerdy for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to be like, okay, all that is background information that is going to help you understand what synth pedals can do for you. Cause this is a little bit about what's under the hood of those synth pedals. Okay. What does synthesis means that we take something that's existing or a couple things that are existing and turn it into something new. Uh, full disclosure, I am not a synth guy. I know very, very little about this. That clip that you saw me in the beginning, that's pretty much everything I've done in my entire career 
with sense. So I'm getting a lot of help on this from a website called Explain That Stuff and from my buddy Matt Manweiler, who's going to be our guest next week on week two of Synths. And he's been very patient teaching me like he's talking to a toddler because in this field, that's basically what I am. All right. In synthesis, we got to do a couple of things to make these sounds. We're going to pick a frequency. We got to pick a wave shape and we'll get in and discuss what that is. Uh, we're going to probably repeat that to add some harmonics because uh, sounds generally are made of more than one frequency. And then we will use subtractive filters to kind of cut away a lot of the nonsense that we just made. And then we're going to add an envelope, sort of this attack, uh, decay, sustain, release type thing that you may have heard about uh, in order to make that new sound. Now, frequency, we know what frequency is. The human ear can hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, which is a good theory. Um, harmonics tend to be multiples of those. When you hear a violin and a trumpet play the same note, they sound different because there are different harmonics in there. There are more frequencies than just the fundamental. Um, but harmonics tend to be multiples. Like if you've got a 20, 200 hertz sound, 400, 600, 800, 1000, those are all gonna be multiples of that and those are considered harmonics. We're gonna hear a couple of harmonics separately and then together right here. So here's separate. Right, those are all harmonics of that original 200 hertz frequency. And then here's what they sound like when you add them together. That's a more complex sound once you have those together. Um, so just keep that in mind in a minute as we move forward. The next thing, we're very familiar with sine waves. That's what we use to describe like generic sounds. Um, but real sounds have overtones and those kind of can be described using uh, more frequencies that are essentially additive of sound waves, but there are not just sine waves. There are triangular waves and square waves and sawtooth waves, and those all sound different. So here is an example um, from Truncated Triangle. So you hear those are all the same frequency, that's all the same note, but a different shape of wave, which gives it some different character. And we will get to a, a little bit more about how we're using that in synthesis. I'm just trying to give you a quick overview of some of these terms and some of these concepts. Uh, envelope, attack, decay, sustain, and release, that's just a graph of your volume versus time. And this is what that looks like. And you can sort of imagine how that sounds. As violinists, we, we're very familiar with this. We call it articulation. How hard do I attack that note? How long do I hold it? You know, am I letting the note ring out by taking my bow off the string? Am I choking it out? We're, we're pretty familiar with how envelopes work. Well, all that can be done electronically as well. Now, as we're using all these things to create these complex sounds, um, then usually we're gonna to have to filter out some of the frequencies that we've created, and that's gonna change the sounds as well. So Matt Manweiler helped me sort of describe this here, and he's gonna, he sent some videos that are gonna help us understand, rather than just taking those static different wave shapes like I, I played for you a minute ago, we can sweep the frequency of those, and you can hear what they sound like at different frequencies. So the top display you're gonna see is an oscilloscope showing you the wave shape. So square or sine or triangle. And then the bottom is an RTA showing you uh, where you are on the frequency spectrum and how it sounds when we move the frequency of that waveform.
So those are different shapes. You can see the sine wave, square wave, the triangle wave. As we move those up and down the frequency spectrum, we can see what those sound like. Now, the next few, we're going to take a waveform and we're going to pick a frequency. It's going to sit there and generate all these overtones that it generates. And then there will be a high cut filter or a low pass filter that is going to be swept across that, cutting out various frequencies. Now, there are two types of uh, these uh, low pass filters. We'll say with resonance and without resonance. What resonance means with a regular low pass filter, it allows the low uh, frequencies to pass and then it rolls off, rolls off the high frequencies, right? If there's no spike in that, it's just a, a roll off, that's no resonance. If it is allowing these frequencies to pass and then there's a spike, then the roll off, that's what we call resonance. And what it does is it adds like a little bit of edge to that sound. And Matt's going to discuss way more of this next week, but just wanted you to hear what it sounds like when we've got a very complex waveform and then we start cutting out certain frequencies in that waveform. So I hit the wrong button. Sorry. So next week, Matt's going to talk way more about what all this means, how we can use this to make cool and crazy sounds. Uh, but I just want you to have a little bit of an idea of what's happening under the hood of some of these synth pedals that we're going to use. And the nice thing about this, you know, we've talked for 10 minutes about all the different oscillators and filters and waveforms and all that. It's important to know what those are. And, and there's a giant learning curve there. But a lot of these synth pedals will do most of this work for you. Uh, there will be presets in these pedals that will sort of bypass a lot of the, the knobs and connections that you have to make uh, and allow you to access some of these cool sounds without getting a PhD in electrical engineering. Okay. Now, there are a couple of different classes of synth pedals. Uh, some require a separate output for each string and some can just use a regular quarter inch output. The ones that require a separate output for each string are what we call the MIDI violins. Those are when you see a Cantini or a Zeta or a Fornus that has that crazy like eight or 13 pin output on it. Uh, generally that has to feed a guitar synthesizer. That's outside the scope of this video. We may talk about that another time, but this week we're gonna be talking about the ones that you can take your regular electric violin with your quarter inch output, plug into this pedal, and get all these synthesizer type sounds. Now there are monophonic and polyphonic synthesizers. Uh, the polyphonic synthesizers, poly, phone, more than one sound. So you can play more than one note at a time into that. You can play double stops, you can play chords. It's gonna deal with that. Monophonic synths can only handle one note at a time and they have a very distinctive sound. And sometimes people want that, okay? So if you try to play more than one note at a time, it's gonna get funky. Um, uh, if you want to be able to play more than one note at a time, then you're going to want a polyphonic synth. If you only want one note at a time, uh, then that's going to be a monophonic synth. So, like I said, all of these oscillators and waveforms and filters, all that stuff will be built in to these synth pedals. And they're going to allow you to, to manipulate these, but again, not have to maybe get a, uh, an advanced degree in electronics to understand it and figure it out. They will use the note you're playing as the fundamental frequency. It's going to have to do pitch detection and then apply that pitch to all these oscillators and filters. So tracking is the word we use to describe how well that pedal is identifying the note that you're playing and how fast it's doing that. Um, and each pedal is going to be a little bit different and uh, you may have to make some adjustments to your playing uh, to account for how this pedal is tracking your sound. Uh, these pedals all allow you to customize your tone to a significant degree and uh, allow you to have more of a high level um, access to that rather than being down in the weeds and, and, uh, and plugging and unplugging and all that. Uh, every pedal is going to be very different because these pedals are doing a significant amount of work for you. 
you're going to have to experiment to find the pedal that does what you want it to do. Uh, you know, the Enzo pedal is going to sound very different from the SY1000. It's going to sound very different from like a Moog pedal or any of these other pedals. Where do you want to put a synth pedal in your signal chain? Probably very early. Okay, we don't want, we want it to get the cleanest signal that it can get from you so that it is going to track better. You might want to do some tr subtractive EQ or some compression before you get into your synth pedal. You're going to have to experiment with how am I going to manipulate my signal to help this pedal track my playing the best. Um, but probably you're going to want to put the synth pedal very early in your signal chain. Be aware that these synth pedals are adding lots and lots of frequencies, both high and low. They can be generating subsonic frequencies like below 20 hertz. They can be generating stuff way up 20, 20 kilohertz above human hearing, above what your PA system can uh, reproduce. So you're probably gonna want a full range speaker system with a sub if you really wanna get the full benefit from these things. Running through a guitar cab or whatever, you're probably gonna be missing out on a lot of what your pedal can do. So, I know this has been very, very deep. I'm kind of just scratching the surface of this stuff as I'm going by. I hope that you've got a little bit better understanding of now of what synth pedals are doing for you underneath the hood. And I hope you're gonna check out this interview that I've got with Sarah Hubbard. Please subscribe to our channel. Here's the interview with Sarah. And then, uh, you know, after you're done, check out some of the other stuff that we've got too.